Tip number one, provide as much visual stimulus as possible. Anytime the player does anything in your game, you should provide as much feedback as possible. Visual and audio, everything you can think of. You need to let the player know that they did something and reward them for it, even if it's as simple as the click of a button. Anytime that your player interacts with your game, you really need to let them know that they did that. Play sounds, make things spin around, make particles shoot out of things. Let the player really know that they interacted with your game. Try and exceed the player's expectations with your game when it comes to the little things. All the little things add up to one overall big experience. So if you can, so if you can do lots of little things when they interact with things, like if all they do is click a button, just make that button maybe maybe make a sound, maybe make that button shine. You can spend just a little bit of time fixing up these little things and your game is going to be so much better for it. Tip number two, no abrupt screen changes. If you need to go from one screen to another, like maybe your level select screen in your menu and you wanna go to the game when they click the level button, don't just show them the game as soon as they click the button. There needs to be some kind of a smooth transition. That's too abrupt. If you go from a menu right to a game, it's too abrupt of a change and it really takes the player out of the experience and it just doesn't feel right. And so, when you have to go from one screen to another screen, do a nice smooth transition. It doesn't matter what the transition really is. It just needs to take a little bit of time going from one to another so it feels smooth and natural. An easy example you can do is when you click the level button on your level select screen, simply fade to black and then fade back in and reveal your, your game. So it's not just a sudden scene change. It's not just going from one screen to another. You're clicking on something, you're fading to black, you're then fading back in and it revealing the game is there. It doesn't knock the player out of the experience the way an abrupt scene change normally would. Tip number three, use sound effects for everything. Everything you can think of. Try it, just try it and see what it's like. You're gonna love it, I guarantee you. Everything from the click of a button to just the pitter-patter of your character's footsteps on the ground. Overall, adding sound effects can really, again, increase the immersion of your game. It makes the player feel like they're part of something that's real. So just try and think about that. Think about how can I make the player really get immersed into my game. Sound effects is a great way to do it because there are sounds in real life. We live in a world of sounds. It makes no sense to then play a game experience and have very little sound coming from that. So no matter what it is that the player is doing in your game, make it make a sound. Hey, by the way, my name's Slushy, and if you're finding these tips useful, I would really appreciate it if you could click the like button down below. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm. And I would also really appreciate it if you could click subscribe and also smash that notification bell if you want to be notified when I make more videos like this one. It would really mean a lot to me. Next tip. Tip number four, use particles as much as you can. Real quick, a particle is just a small graphic. Think of like, you know, a spark in an explosion. With an explosion, there are dozens, if not hundreds of tiny little sparks that fly out. A particle is like a spark in this sense, in that there is usually dozens or hundreds of them uh, at once that can, you know, explode or they can like, come out as a stream. Particle systems are systems that come with game engines like Unity or Godot, and these particle systems do all the work for you of managing all your little particles. Um, if you don't already have one, find a, a good particle system to use, and then use it everywhere that you can. Whenever things disappear, uh, make, them, make them disappear in an explosion of particles instead of just disappearing for no reason. Particles are an easy way to add, to, to give your game a real sense of, wow, there's lots of stuff going on in this game. Particles are a good way to provide visual stimulus to the player. Well, when they do something or when something happens, when something changes, particles are really good bang for your buck for immersiveness and just the wow factor when uh, developing your game. Tip number five, polish equals smooth. When you think about polishing something, you're trying to polish out all the rough edges, right? You're making it smooth. And so when that's what you need to be thinking about when you're polishing your game, make it smooth. Is there something in your game that feels abrupt or rough or abrasive? Then 
smoothing it out. When you go from one scene to another, make that a smooth transition. When something uh, disappears, make it fade out smoothly. When something you know moves from one spot to another, make it move smoothly. The idea is everything that you're trying to polish should be smooth. Uh, everything should have the, a smooth feeling to it. I know developers that like to polish their game at the end of game development when they're done building the game. And so their last step is usually the polish step. And that's completely fine. I do that sometimes too. Another thing that uh, I know developers like to do is they like to polish as they go. That really depends on what your motivation is, um, what works for you. Sometimes when you polish the game as you go, you it, it can slow down your uh, game development time. And so you might not feel like you're getting as far into developing your game as you would like because you're spending some time polishing as you go. Other times that can be fine because when you polish as you go, you can get a sense of accomplishment. You, you This little thing that you're building, this game that you're building, you haven't really done much yet, but already it feels like such a cool, fun experience because of all these little effects and all this polish that you've added to it. It can really be a good motivator if you're that kind of person that needs lots of motivation when building games, which I am. Uh, it can really be helpful to have this sense of accomplishment and just this sense of, wow, this is really cool. This thing I'm building right now is really cool and I really want to show it to people. That can be a really good motivator to do that. Some developers would just prefer to polish everything at the very end because they know everything they've built up to that point is good and it's what's going to be in the game. There's no necessarily a risk of polishing something only to have only to realize later that you don't need that in, at all and you're just going to take the whole feature out of the game. Uh, so you, there's not as much necessarily wasted work in that sense because at the very end of game develop development, you know what needs to be polished and you know what's what the, the game is basically done. It just needs to look cool, needs to feel immersive, and it needs to be polished. I hope that these tips have at least given you some idea on what you can do to polish your game in a efficient in an efficient way and maybe a. a Maybe not a quick way, but at least a way that's not going to take you forever. Um, polishing is all about accomplishing the little things that all add up to make one nice experience, one immersive experience for the player. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.